Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to OzCastNetwork.com for details. Paul Atherton is an ex-Wall Street advisor on a mission to help young people win back their financial power, wealth and security. He does this by helping them understand the hidden world of finance, risk and investments, helps them figure out how it impacts them and to seize the opportunities to make it work to their advantage. This is Paul Street Journal. I'm here with Paul. How are you this morning? Hi, Tim. Yeah, I'm doing really well. Nice to hear. You know, something I've heard is uh, there's you know quite a few different types of investing. You have you know, value investing, uh, trading, uh, and speculating. Can you explain the difference? Well, that's a, that's a great question, Tim. I I think we all think we're all the same type of trading. We all make the same type of decisions, or perhaps maybe we think that some make better decisions than others. But there are really different types of investing and investment strategies and approaches. So, you know, investors buy and sell based on a whole variety of decisions. And where there is a good balance in the structures of their decision making, financial markets are stable and efficient. But, they, you know, but there are times when investments are heavily tilted into one style, um, one decision process, and these can undermine the functioning of a, of a market. Before we get to that, why don't we talk about what the th- three main styles of uh, investing, which you just mentioned. Uh, so the first would be uh, fundamental. Fundamental investing, also known as value investing, involves buying stocks or some asset in order to earn the economic value generated over the life of that investment. In this case, uh, an investor attempts to assess the long-term cash flows generated by that asset, usually a stock, but it can be a bond. And then they at least mentally try and discount those cash flows over a period of time to get an understanding of will they receive those that cash and therefore the value of the company. And a great example might be Apple. I use this a lot, but Apple had Apple Music. And I remember way back when they were doing this and I speculated that the long-term cash flow of this was tremendous. And of course, today I sit around and I use Spotify. So I would have poorly discounted those cash flows. Now, Apple clearly has other cash flows that have come in. A lot goes in, as you can see, to the understanding the the, the value of a company. And perhaps we can do a, another episode just on the valuing a company. So that's fundamental investing. And that is generally for the long term. And then you have the more exciting part that some people think is speculators. And speculators... They are a group of investment strategies that take advantage of information that will have immediate effect on the price. By They cause short-term changes in the supply or demand of an asset, and it could take place in hours, days, or, or weeks, but it's generally over a short time period, and, and these changes of the asset are temporary. And what the speculator does is they get in and out of the market on a very quick basis and make profits in the very in, the short term. The third type of of uh, investing is what you mentioned is rel rel value uh, or relative value. And the rel val boys or the I call, call it arbitrage playing is really the the area for the big boys, and that's sort of where you might see it on the markets or on Wall Street. And they have access to multiple markets, and what they do is they see mismatches of prices. This happens, but it doesn't happen for long because the rel rel vals. Uh, guys, they get in and they arbitrage the difference. So I remember back in the uh, in the nineties when uh, the early days of trading of um, some of the Russian stocks, for example, they were traded early on the New York Stock Exchange and they were traded on the Russian Stock Exchange, and people found that differences were quite significant. So they would buy the cheap version and sell the expensive version, and they would do it until their eyes bled and they kept on doing it until what would happen eventually the market would close around that price but uh, that's not for your average joe most investors most of our listeners will be on the fundamental or the speculators the problem usually is that people think they're investing or doing fundamental investing is in fact what they're doing is making a punt i think we've touched on that before okay so you know i understand all of that but why would i choose say one one over the other what what works for me i mean i'm I'm not not a wall street jockey let's say but (laughs) so the best investing is fundamental and of course there is a place for speculation for our listeners it's really fundamental investing or value investing or speculation the really the arbitrage or the relative value trading is for the traders so it's not really a place for for um your listeners but i would say that um, if you look at the three strategies, relative value, speculation, and fundamental investing, e- each of these investment strategies plays a very important 
different and necessary role in ensuring that markets function. And this helps keep capital low, absorbs financial risk, and allocates capital effectively. So a well-balanced market is relatively stable and allocates capital in an efficient way. And without a good balance of those three styles of investment, a financial system will lose its flexibility and the cost of capital is likely to be distorted and the markets become, uh, become inefficient in, in allocating capital. And this often happens during a crisis. But for everybody else, I would strongly recommend value investing for the long term. That's what we need to do. We really need to think about what we're investing in and hopefully be able to stick with that for a longer period of time. So where are the value investors? Well, I would hope your listeners, it's you and I, uh, money managers that will take care of your money, will look for value. They will look for investments that will have a longer term play. And again, as I mentioned, a value investor will discount those cash flows and expectation that over the long term, they're making a very good investment. But not all markets have a that optimal mix of the three that I mentioned. China, for example, does not have a well-balanced investor base, whereas Australia would, Australia does, the United States does, and Europe, all of most of the West has a very balanced investor base. But China doesn't. There is, in fact, really, there is no arbitrage trading because this requires low transaction costs. It requires credible data and the legal ability to short security. So none of these are really available in China. There are also very few value investors in China because most of the tools are re- that required for the value investing are good macro data, good financial statements, clear corporate governance, a good governance framework, predict- predictable government behavior that they're missing. Um, I think we overlook uh, that and when we're talking about our own country in Australia. Um, we have all of those in place to enables us to make value investing. So in China, and I think it's good to use that as a, as a contrast to a strong market like Australia, the vast majority of investors in China tend to be speculators. So, And what consequence of this is that the local markets often do a poor job of rewarding companies for decisions that add economic value over the medium or long term. But here, gosh, you know, value investing is a huge part of the market. It's not the entire market, but it is what most of what uh, drives our decision processes and it's certainly what should uh, our listeners be thinking about so that's i guess part of just the capitalist um, that's the capitalist yeah. mix you know yeah. you, you you want people that are speculating you want people that are value investing and you want arbitrage that, that nice healthy mix produces a functioning market and our part to play in that is value investing right? we we want to look out for those value investing and as i mentioned probably something I'll mention a lot, what you've got to be careful about is, is it value investing? Because often people think it's a value, or they're value investing, but often they're making a punt. Um, They're just a bet, really. And we're not in the game of making bets. We shouldn't be. We should be looking for long-term wealth creation. Sure thing. Well, thank you for coming in and talking with me. That's great, Tim. Well, thanks for having me. Cheers. Paul Street Journal. Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to oscastnetwork.com for details.